So I'm going to get to painting some hair so that you guys can uh, see a little bit about what I'm doing. Um, I chose to do a minking technique for you, which I felt like could kind of really uh, exemplify something other than just your typical balayage, which of course is, uh, I want to make sure that I say that balayage, as you know, is a technique. It is not ombre. So contrary to what people say, ombre is a look and balayage is a technique. So when your guests come in and they say, oh, I, want, I don't want balayage because I want my highlights to come all the way from the scalp, you say, okay, fine, well, let's paint some hair together. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways in which uh, I paint hair, because of course I only have 40 lovely minutes with you, and now it's down to 30, just in case you were wondering. And I'm just gonna show you a couple of different ways that I actually stroke. And hopefully that will allow you to know uh, some some things before you leave. How many of you actually paint hair now? That's a great amount. I love that. Give yourselves a hand. Welcome to the revolution. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Oh well. We're all hairdressers, right? Okay, so there's, I've got a couple little things to tell you. So the paddle and the brush, very important. This brush never lives in my bowl. So I'm going to teach you a brochet technique. So this is my loader brush. So my loader brush puts on the sunlights, like so, onto my paddle, and I always keep that in the reservoir in the corner. And then I take my finger, no offense, and I come in and I take my section and I load the product to my brush and I tap at the regrowth, I rub in the middle, I take my brush, I drop it onto the paddle, like so, into the reservoir, and I push to the ends. Okay, so this is the brochet technique. So when you are trying to convince your guest that you can do exactly what you can do with a foil, but just a lot faster, this is the technique that you're going to do. So now you can also take a lot of sections at one time with brochet and make that work as well. So here I'm just brocheting. Brochet is the French word for brush. So basically, again, I just want to come around and try to work around my little cameraman here. Take my finger, take my brush that has a tail comb already on it, like so, and I'm going to take the two together and I'm going to make a little V. I'm going to take the piece. I'm going to make it almost like an acrylic nail, how you put the product on the nail, and I'm going to tap at the regrowth. I'm going to rub in the middle. I'm going to drop the piece onto the brush, or excuse me, onto my brush and onto my paddle into the reservoir, like so. Okay? So then I lay those down. Now, here's a good balayage rule. If you take your paddle and you put it on to your bowl, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have lightener all over the back. That's going to go all over the hair. Then you're going to have a big mess. How many of you have possibly stopped balayaging just because you couldn't control the mess? I know you're out there. So a lot of people um, stop balayaging for that reason. Okay, so look here. So this is the perforated balayage wrap. It comes in three sizes, short, medium, and long. So this is medium, and I'm using medium on her just because uh, it's what I had in the back. Uh, you ever do that to clients? You just come out with what you have? Uh, so nonetheless, I, t I actually kind of fold it a little bit like so, and I do not push the plastic into the hair. So it's not a foil. I'm not making a hot pocket. I simply just push it into the hair like so. And so that becomes not only does that become a reservoir, excuse me, a window for me to look through, but it also allows me to know exactly where to put my streaks and it's a heat conductor. Now, there are people out there, uh, I know we have a lot of famous balayage painters via YouTube, um, but <laughs> don't get me started. Okay, but nonetheless, I do want to say that I do prefer the plastic. A lot of people ask me that. However, if you don't want to use it, it's completely fine. Sunlights will not uh, bruise into the hair, so it's completely fine. And the reason I like it is for the heat source, because a lot of times when you're trying to lift with balayage, the challenge is heat, because you don't put this under the dryer. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a technique called crocheting. So again, just like the same, I'm going to pick up the piece, like so, and crocheting is little wide patterns. So you can see here on the screen, it's like little Ys. Now, the Ys can be high at the top and strong at the ends. The Ys can be big when you saw in the video how my Y or my V came down very deep into it and actually onto the ends. So there's a lot of different ways. Obviously, this being shorter hair, I'm going to make a bigger Y. So I take a larger section, as you can see from my cameraman here, and I'm going to tap at the regrowth on one side, tap at the regrowth on the other side, and now I'm beginning to make my Y formation, like so. Then I'm gonna take a little bit more product, and then I'm gonna show you a little trick. So I can either ride the ridges on both sides and lightly dust in the middle. So you can see how on here, I keep thinking I need to turn her, but I have, I have eyes for you here. But I can ride the ridge on both sides and I can leave that dark. You see that dark right in the middle there? That's one way of doing. Now if I was melting a second color into that, I could, take, I could just take a little bit of a melt, like so, and I could just melt that color right into the middle, and this, of course, I'll give you formulas in just a moment, but now I'm just uh, wanting to sh you to see that I can melt a low light right in between that color, like so. Now, you may choose to put your melting in first, so I'm actually going to do that next. I'm gonna put my melt in, put that over there, thank you. Um, I'm gonna put my melt in first. So now let me show you taking a melt, and now I'm going to melt the middle, you see? So I can take that and just lightly even use my plastic. That's why my plastic is so important. And you can see that everything I do, it tends to stay in triangles. Triangles is how balayage is best. Triangles, seamless, bias, everything in more bias and triangular motions. Um, is, is best. Okay, so here I'm going to now pick up around my crochet, and you're going to see me come in. I've got the whole section. I'm going to tap at the regrowth, and I am going to bump right into that low light. And I prefer well a hair color. That's what I, I paint with, and this is, um, I'm going to give you a formula in a moment when I get to the top, but this is a demi-permanent color so that you will know that obviously since I'm just bruising into the hair slightly, a demi-permanent color is better. Are there any questions about that? No? Coffee hadn't kicked in yet? Okay, well I'll just keep on going then. Okay, so nonetheless, what you need to know about balayage is that you can paint hair at any um, technique on any place on the hair. So what I mean by that is, in some places you may want to do a big Y or a big V. Some places you may want to only use brochet. Some places you want to melt. Some places you want to mink. Some places you might want to use the comb technique. So you have a lot of different options throughout the hair. And so when students ask me, well then how is it that you do that? My answer to that standard question is, read your haircut. So I like to paint energy to my haircut. So that is always a very, very important thing for me. So I'm gonna leave that out because I'm gonna do something special with that in just a moment. So obviously I can come in here and just in the sake of time, I could very easily, oops, I could very easily come in and just melt out some of these sides, making that nice and dark. I could just bring that piece right out and paint into what I have here. Because I love dark around the face. You know, I think as stylists, sometimes we far too often think that everything light has to live on the hairline. And it doesn't. It doesn't have to live only on the hairline. So for me, anytime I see um, that I want to uh, add, add something to the look that I'm doing, then uh, I always love to, to, as I say, sit it down with something dark. Because what makes light look lighter? Dark, shadows. So for me, it's all about shadowing and the importance of shadowing throughout. So I'm gonna just turn a little bit here and um, pick this piece up. And I'm gonna show you how easily I can do almost like a foil highlighting. I wanna make sure that everybody leaves here this morning 
not feeling like they didn't know how to do that. So I can just come in here and very easily paint as if I was weaving hair with the foil. See, I take my loader brush, reload onto my paddle, come throughout, and paint. So when your guest back in the salon says, oh, but I want to have hash marks on a football field, you can say, okay, no problem, I can handle that. You know the girls that get in the mirror and go like that, and they're looking for every little piece along the way? I have those clients too, I know who they are. But nonetheless, um, sorry, uh, nonetheless, uh, that's a way in which you can do it. Oops, sorry, I moved. Apologize. Okay, so that's a way in which I can do it. So if that is indeed the way that we need it, then that's uh, what we can do. So I'm gonna just turn onto this side here. So I'm gonna do something really interesting to the top. Just a moment. So now I'm going to paint out this side of the hair. I'm just gonna remove that because I love that dark. Because basically what I'm getting ready to do is mink the top. And what minking is, is a short hair ombre feel. So what I'm doing here is I'm just removing this side. And in a second, I'm gonna show you how to use the comb bolly. Now that would not necessarily be a technique that I would use in this short hair, but I do want to show it to you because it always gets a lot of, oh, you know, so I want to try to wow you with some comb bolly because this is for the people who want to do baby lights. Okay, so I've painted that out. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to show you a little bit of comb bolly. Let me get organized. It's hard working off a cart because I don't work off carts at home. Um, so, um, but I am going to show you exactly how to do this so that you can go back and do, do it at home. So you must have a cutting comb. You cannot have a tail comb to do this. You have to have a long enough comb that has this on the bottom. It can't have one of those little hooky things um, like this. No bueno. That don't work. And the reason is because the product travels on the comb. So you don't want to use a comb like that, even though that's cute and yellow. Um, I want to use a comb like this. And you can't use this because you have to hook. So it's like a crocheting hook. So I take the product on 3 quarters of the comb like so. So I apply it to my comb. And I really make sure it gets nice and in the teeth. OK? So you can see that? So then I take my hook. And I get ready, and I hook the piece of hair like this. I hold from underneath. I take my comb like this. Can you see me? I don't know. Can you see me? Because I can't see me. OK. And then I take the comb, and I come in right. Whoa, he's pushing me. Oh, going to fall down with the camera here. OK, and I'm going to comb one little streak in the hair like so. So when you have that person that just is very afraid of lasagna, because that is what balayage is. It's lasagna. You're actually making energy bigger and wider, okay? So when they're afraid of lasagna, give them some spaghetti, okay? So you can come right in, hook the comb, just like so, come in, and down. It gives a nice streak every time. Every time you have to reload your brush, just like so, okay? So it's very important to make sure to, uh, your brush, your comb, so it's very important. Other th an another thing that I want to tell you is if you try to hold it like this, this doesn't work. So you can't hold your hand up. You have to hold your hand under like that. OK, so now I'm going to take it here, and I'm going to go right in and comb one more time. Doesn't that look fun? I bet you're all going to go try it on Tuesday. Okay, so here we go. So hooking, and you can just control the peaks and the valleys. So I just look into the hair, I see where it needs to happen, and I comb the hair in. So you can see that this is not going to do very much to the hair. This basically is going to be a very small little baby light. 
Now, if I wanted to do comb, highlight, and low light, highlight, and low light, I could do that too. You know, the sky is the limit. That's why I love balayage so much, um, is simply because anything that I choose to do um, can be done. My tail comb. Sorry. Uh, so anything I choose to do can be done. Okay, so now I know this haircut lives on this side, right? So for me, I'm just going to do a little bit of crocheting right here, just a bit. And I'm going to melt my color first. So I'm going to just show you. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to melt a line because I like that. I like what that does. And then I'm going to energize that on the outsides. So when I come through here, I'm going to energize that on the outside. So now I'm going to get my brush again. I'm going to pick that up. And I'm just going to paint ends only. Okay, then I'm going to come here and I'm going to paint ends only. And the formula I'm using here is uh, one ounce of 70, half ounce of 60, and a half ounce of 7 stroke 73 and 13 volume. Okay, and then of course 40 volume and my sunlights. Sunlights has been quite the journey for me. I want to thank everybody for its incredible res uh, response. And I want to tell you a little bit about how I started it, simply so that you know a little bit of the history. Simply put, I have been teaching for 20 years in my academy in Atlanta. And for all the time, I kept saying to myself, I really need a better paint. I really need a better paint. So I went to some big pe people, and I said, can you please make me a paint? And they said, you know, balayage, it's just a trend. I said, OK, I'll just make it myself then. And so then became the birth of sunlights and the birth of the Bali box. So if you have a chance today to come check me out in my very small, humble booth at 3877, <laughs> just look for the yellow. And right above my booth is a huge sign hanging from the ceiling that says, make me wet. So that's how you can find me. OK. So it's not hard to separate the treasure from the trash at the beauty show, is there? <laughs> Hence why this is a full classroom, right? Because the people that want to learn are here, and the people that don't care are there. OK, so anyway, nonetheless, I am right next to that sign. I have really arrived. But I have my 14-year-old daughter with me. I, I, I haven't used that as a location uh, thing quite yet. I haven't figured out how I'm going to tell her that one. But nonetheless, now I'm going to do my minking technique. So you can see that I'm teasing this up a little. And the whole idea about teasing this up is that I am causing hairs to be like this, OK? So that's basically what I'm doing. So this hair was pre-cut. I'm going to tease this hair up a lot, OK? And I'm going to get that set to go. I'm going to get that set. So it's almost set. Boy, Florida's got some static. For those of you who live here, I'm sure you're saying, oh, yeah. OK, so first I'm going to put what I call my money piece in. And um, the, my money piece is right here. It's riding on the ridge. And you can see it, can't you? You're like, whoo, candy, go get that piece right there. Right? Because that's how hair talks to you. Hair will talk to you. So for me now, I'm going to do my money piece. So I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to tap and rub, and I guess I was not supposed to put my back to you. I'm sorry, but I've been working hard on my derriere, so <laughs> anyway. All right, I'll turn. I'll turn a little. Let me turn this way, Mr. Cameraman. Is this better? Did I make your day? You're supposed to say yes. I guess they're not paid to talk. OK, <laughs> so anyway. Um, so I'm going to have my money piece, because this is the piece of hair that's going to talk to me. So I'm going to come down, and then I'm going to crochet on this side. So I'm just going to paint that just like that, crochet around just like so. 
I'm gonna get ready to put a piece of plastic underneath. I'm gonna take my loader brush and I'm gonna use my loader brush to get these ends. And that is for saturation. So it is fine for you to go in and use your loader brush for intense saturation. So you can see how I'm doing that, right? And I don't drop it until I have it. So sometimes when you guys get little spots in your balayages, has any, anybody ever had that happen? Okay, that's called a pop mark. And a pop mark basically is because you aren't painting smoothly. So the first thing that I do is I make sure before I drop a section that my pop marks or my saturation, pardon me, my saturation is as such that um, I make sure that it's smooth. And so if you're having issues with that, that's a very important thing to you, for you to look out for. Okay? All right. So any other questions before I get to the piece de resistance? Yes. Okay, so my lightener is a, made with kaolin clay. And so the clay uh, allows you, know, you know I'm from Georgia, so red Georgia clay. So anyway, um, so the clay allows it to be moist on the outside and dry in the middle. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't make you um, have a, a dust bath. So that's why I really like my clay. It's also got um, a grapefruit extract in it. It can lift up to six levels uh, with no heat. Now, my rule on heat is simple, and I'm going to tell you all some secrets, so get your pen out. So you cannot put them under the dryer. You cannot, cannot, cannot put them under the dryer. But if you don't own a Climazone, which is made by Wella, or if you don't own a Rollerball, which is by Takara Belmont, if you don't own any of those types of products, you can heat a hooded dryer for about five or 10 minutes while you're finishing up your balayage. And then you can sit them under a turned off dryer that is warm, okay? Now, when I'm on set and doing things for photo shoot work and I've got no dryer, no nothing, uh, this is my secret. First of all, I always would sit them by the window. If the, if the model is processing, I will sit them by the window. I mean, don't cats live by the window? So they like to get warm and purr over there. So I figured maybe my balayage could purr over there. So basically what I do is I, I put them close to the window or I make sure that my model kind of walks in place and gets her body heat going, you know, because if she's shivering and freezing, so is her hair. So for me, I'll, I'll get people moving, you know, sometimes that's a good way to do it. Uh, another way to do it, and this is really not my favorite way, but in the event that I absolutely have to have heat, I will take a clean paddle, especially one that says candy shawl, and I will hold it up above the head like this, and I'll take my blow dryer and I'll shoot into it and I'll let the heat sort of dissipate on a low level. That's another thing. Now, some people ask me, can you use a diffuser? Yeah, I mean, that kind of is the same concept, but this looks cooler, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so my daddy always taught me, you sell sizzle, not steak. They can get steak anywhere, right? So I want to make sure that, um, that I sell the sizzle, you know? Um, you know, I always say in my classroom, are you worth what you charge and do you charge what you're worth? And how you want to upgrade your business behind the chair is all the things that you do to make the devil in the detail. For instance, this is, well, um, this is a silver bowl. Can you take that off, please? This is just a silver bowl. Comes from the kitchen store. It's $1.39. Why do I mix in a silver bowl? Doesn't do, there's no reason other than what? The devil's in the detail, right? It just makes it look better, correct? So if I come over with crappy tools and crappy things, I'm gonna charge crappy prices. You know, so for me, that's, that's the way that, that lives. Okay, so here we go with the main king. 
So now I'm just minking onto the ends. And because I have all that teasing in there, you're going to see how this just creates a beautiful ombre type of effect in short hair. And I'm going to bring up a model on the screen now. And I'm going to show you, this is her um, Kelsey before. And, okay, so because I know you wouldn't be able to see this unless you came by 3877 at the Make You Wet sign. Uh, but nonetheless, I wanted you to see how this looks. And now you can see Kelsey after. So you can see what happens with the color at the end. Okay, so it just gives you uh, that beautiful, gorgeous feeling of short hair with uh, a balayage technique. 